Okay, if you've watched some of my earliest atmospheric electricity videos and research with the Atma motor, you know I've talked about Hermann Plasson and some of the work he did in the 1920s. He's one of the few that claims to have brought down power in the range of kilowatts uh, from the atmosphere. And in, if you look over his patents, one of the things that comes up is the use of a flame as a collector of atmospheric electricity. Now, atmospheric electricity runs about 30 volts per foot as you move up from the surface of the Earth, and it can get up into the thousands of volts. Now, I've been doing a lot of research with Atma motors uh, to convert high voltage static electricity into something useful. But I haven't been doing as much research in the collecting of atmospheric electricity and trying different collectors. So far, I've just been trying needle points. But Herman Plassen talks about using flames of various kinds and lamps, as well as radium. Uh, Oleg Jefeminko also used radium on a 20-foot pole to run a small atmospheric motor, just on a 20-foot pole. I don't have access to radium, but I've decided to do some research with flame and see if that makes any difference over just a needle point. So I've got my Van de Graaff running at a set speed, and it's positioned at a set distance. And I'm reaching over with the needle, being careful to hold the insulated cover, not the needle itself, but as you can see, it's just not a good enough collector to spin up this mini Atma motor. So leaving everything in the same position, same speeds, I'm going to do a test with a propane torch. In this setup, I have the red wire connected to the metal portion on the tip of the propane torch. The first time I tried this and saw the Mini Atma motor spin up so quickly at the same distance as the needle test, I was just amazed. It's one of those moments where history comes alive. You've been reading an old patent from the 1920s. The guy talks about using flame to better capture atmospheric electricity. And here the test totally confirms it. It's like I have another missing piece of the puzzle. So for my next experiment, I would like to get rid of the Van de Graaff find a small lightweight propane torch and lift it up to a higher elevation and see how this works for capturing actual atmospheric electricity. So in this little Atma motor, I tried something new for connecting the blades up to the positive and negative connection points, and that's this conductive PLA. It's really the first uh, project I've got to use this on, and it works great. And I think it works especially well in an application like this where you're dealing with very high voltage electrostatic electricity because even this even if this is not as good a conductor as copper or something of that nature it's very adequate for high voltage electrostatic experiments and uh, it can get right down in there into uh, tight little areas and melt as you can see right around the blades here what I've done I've just melted it right down into there in contact with the blade and brought it up to the negative and positive points so I really like this stuff conductive PLA it 3D prints very well. I just used a 3D printing pen. I got this pen for like 30 bucks on eBay and that allowed me to extrude this uh, right along and uh, connect it up to the blades. So I'll probably be using this pen with conductive PLA on a lot of projects in the future. Anyway, I'll put a link to this on conductive PLA in the video description. I bought mine from CME CNC and a uh, very interesting material. So I'll keep experimenting with it.